Hey, hello, I'm back again. It's Prosper Mung, and in this week, we're going to be looking at balancing of redox reaction, just as we saw in our last look lesson. In this case, we're going to be looking at advanced, let's not call it advanced per se. We're only going to be looking at all rules. We're going to be following all rules, looking at an example that covers all the rules that have given you so far for balancing of redox reaction. For the last lesson, we just saw a simple redox reaction a simple ionic equation for us to balance but in this lesson we're going to take a step forward by looking at a little bit higher ionic equation nonetheless simple so let's dive into our objectives for the lesson the first thing you should learn from this lesson is you should be able to identify reducing and oxidizing agents and the next aspect is you should be able to write half equations now this first two you have done in our previous video so it shouldn't be a problem in this case so you should be able to identify reducing and oxidizing agent next you should be able to write half equations the half equation equations i'm referring to is oxidation half equation and reduction half equation and lastly you should be able to balance redox equation and that is our pick for the lesson we're going to be looking at balancing of redox equations or reactions or ionic equations whatever we want to call it they are all the same let's dive in firstly i think you need to remember those rules if you can't remember just give yourself a test right now pause the video and try to see if you can remember the rules to balancing of redox reaction all right nonetheless if you can't remember it we're looking at we're going to take the rules again let's look at the rules one after the other so let us balance an equation to do so, we need steps to balancing an equation. The first aspect that you should consider is step one, you should write half equations. And remember, do not forget the addition of water, hydrogen, ion, and electron. These are all you could add to a redox reaction, whether the oxidation half reaction or the reduction half reaction. So you could either add water, of course it follows, you add water, you add hydrogen, ion, and electron. Let's see how that happens. So the first step is you write the half equation. Step two is to balance elements in the equation other than oxygen and hydrogen. So if you see any, other, any elements in the equation other than oxygen and hydrogen, just try to make sure that they are of the same number uh, on both sides. For instance, if we see chromium to be two on one side, you should make sure that it is also two on the other side. Apart from oxygen and hydrogen, you leave oxygen and hydrogen out of it. So the next aspect we're looking at is we balance oxygen by adding water. If you have oxygen on one side, let's say you have three oxygen on one side, you try to make it the same by adding water on the other side to balance it out. So if you have three oxygen, you're adding an equal amount of water. Let's say three water also, three oxygen, you add three water on the other side of the equation. So the next aspect is balance hydrogen atoms including okay it does balance hydrogen atoms by adding water you must have introduced hydrogen atoms so let's say you added one water that means you have two hydrogen atoms on one side of the equation make sure to add hydrogen ions on the other side since you have two hydrogen ions on one side you add two hydrogen ions on the other side of the equation to make sure they are balanced and the fifth one is Add up the charges on each side, make them equal by adding enough electrons. So that means that from step three, so you should remember this that's from step three to step five is just water, hydrogen, and electron. So the first one is write the half equation, second one is balance other elements other than oxygen and hydrogen. So from number three to number five, we have the addition of water, hydrogen, ion, and electron, respectively. So number six, you make sure that charge on both sides of the equation is the same like simultaneous equation i hope you can still remember your simultaneous equation now when you want to eliminate a particular variable in a particular in two given equations you multiply by numbers to make sure that they are the same so you can just easily subtract or cancel out as the case may be exactly that is exactly what you'll be doing in regards to redox reaction no difference so the last aspect is the half equations are added together, canceling out the electrons to form one balanced equation. 
common terms should also be cancelled out. So this is just simple as cancelled out. If, you, if the electrons that has formed when you, that you formed or created by multiplying on both sides, they become equal. You make sure you cancel them out. And then if you have water, excess water, let's say you have water on one side and you have water on, on the other side, let's say seven to one, you cancel out one and cancel out one from the also from the seven aspects to give you six is to zero because the seven seem to be excess in in the sense that you can actually cancel out water on one side and leaving you with six so it's like an excess so that's what we're going to be doing balance of redox reaction these are the steps to balance the redox reaction they're not difficult and really after a while you don't get to have to remember or memorize these steps to balance the redox reaction it just come naturally to you you just flow like a guru <laughs> all right so let's balance this equation wow a wonderful equation it is looking a bit complex than the one i gave you in our last video but it is not different it is not something far-fetched it's not something that we couldn't solve so let's do it all right so what is our first step do you remember first step tell me what's our first step our first step is to write half equation so what you need to do is to identify the half equation let's say you have this equation the first thing you tell yourself okay what is the oxidation half and what is the reduction half so on this side you see chromium is losing oxygen at least we could start with oxygen it's losing oxygen to give us uh, this compound i said chromium no not chromium this ion the chromate ion is losing oxygen to give us chromium here chromium ion over here so it means that loss of oxygen is reduction that means that from this to this is the reduction half equation why from this to this is the oxidation half equation so as simple as that it's really that basic so this is the oxidation half so let's write let's see so the steps separate the half equations so we have here chromium this becoming this and this becoming this in your own for your own write-up i would wish that you write reduction half here or take the reduction half to the top or whatever the case make sure you write you, you you label it having the reduction half you write a reduction half and oxidation half just like i taught you in our previous video i had to save space and eliminated that okay so for the next one we have okay what's the next one well balance elements other than oxygen and hydrogen so you look to each of the equation and check out for elements other than oxygen and hydrogen and try to balance them so let us look at this we have chromium here Be chromium we have two chromium over here can you see it and we over here we have just one now this is uh, the ion so that is not that does not count for how many chromium this is uh, the, uh, the the charge of chromium so chromium here is two, this tells us it is two, but here it is one. So we need to balance that. Of course, we're not balancing oxygen, we leave out our oxygen. So in this case, we have hydrogen here. We're not balancing hydrogen, nitrogen. So we're looking out for nitrogen. Nitrogen is one over here and it is one over here. So oof, that's less work for us. We don't have to balance nitrogen. So we're only left with chromium to balance. So let's see how we go about that. And here we go so we're balancing chromium by adding two note that chromium is two here now chromium is now two here compare it with what we have over here why the next equation remains the same have we gone that far <laughs> pause the video and take a look again i think we've gone that far let's continue not so difficult all right so remember step three we add water to balance oxygen add water to balance oxygen now here it's where it gets interesting so oxygen here is seven so what did i tell you since oxygen is seven you add the same amount of water on the other side now over here oxygen is three we have one oxygen two oxygen atoms over here it means you need to add one water over the side to give us to balance it out so it's as simple as that to balance it out oxygen seven here you add seven over here seven water so over here we have three oxygen atoms and over here we have two oxygen atoms it means here is deficient of one so we add one water let's see about that so voila we have seven water 
added to the side and one water added to the side. I do hope you understand that aspect. All right, so the next step, remember our next step, can you tell me the next step? <laughs> you don't remember? All right, the next step, the next step is we add balanced hydrogen atoms by adding hydrogen ion. So let's see, you can read the write-up I will be doing the explaining. You can pause the video at any point and then read the write-up. It gives you a better insight to these things. Okay, so, oh, so we're adding, adding hydrogen ion. Notice that here we have seven water. It means that over here, it means seven water, yes, water molecules, and the hydrogen ion is two times seven, giving you 14. So you add the, the equivalent of, in, in terms of hydrogen ion over the other side of the equation. And here you count the hydrogen ion. We have one here, we have, we have three here, and then here we have nothing. So three, you have to add equivalent, three ion. Simple, right? It's simple. It's really simple. It's really that simple. Yes, it's as simple as that. So let's go to the next aspect. Step, we balance the charge. Now let us calculate. Before I show the equation for this aspect, I want us to calculate the charges we have here. Let me show you how to calculate. So follow me. Ah, so lean forward, lean forward. Let's come together, lean forward. So we have here 14, 14, that's plus 14. See this 14 plus the charge over here, do you see that? So that's plus 14 and then minus 2. So plus 14 minus 2 is what? Minus 12, um, plus 12, right? Good. So on this side, we have 2 times 3, which is 6 plus 6. And then we have zero on this side. So we have plus six and plus 12. So what do we do? We need to add electron. Adding electron is like subtraction. In other words, where do you need to subtract to give you an equivalent or make it equal on both sides? We have 12 plus 12 and we have plus three plus six. So we need to subtract from the 12. How many, how many electrons do we need to subtract? Let's say we are subtracting six electrons. I'm using the word subtract, but in real, it is addition. You say plus six. I'm using the word subtract so you understand it better. So you add the electron, or let's say you subtract the amount of electron, but you don't write minus, you use plus six electron to 12 to this aspect. Add six to this side and it will balance it up. We'll see about that. Now for this one, let us calculate. We have zero here. There is no charge anywhere here. There is no charge anywhere here. But we have here plus three. And we have here minus. Minus. That's just minus one. So plus three minus one is plus two. So where do we need to subtract? We need to subtract from this, this side. How many do we need to subtract? We need to subtract two to give us zero. Since we have zero on the other side. And... The basic thing is, if you know you subtracted from this side, the tendency is that the next as the next one you'll be subtracting from this side. If you've done subtraction for this side, as you have added electron in the regards to this equation over here on the reactant side, the tendency is for the next one it will be on the product side. So let's see how we've done so far, and we have it correct. We have six electron being added to this side, and for the next one, finger crossed. Oh, we didn't, I didn't include that. Okay, for the next one, we we'll have to add two electrons on this side, please. So note this. So for the other reaction, there is no charge. Okay, I, 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 did, I included it. It's just, I, I, I had to break it down so that we better understand it. So you can read these write-ups. They are for you, for your understanding. So do not hesitate to read them up. So for the next one, voila. And we are correct. Yes. So that's step five. We're done with step five. Let's move on to the next. So continuation. So step six. S step six is we scale the reaction so that of oh, what do we do? We just make sure simultaneously. Remember our simultaneous equation. You can read that for yourself if you want. Simultaneous equation. You know we have six electrons for the first one and we have two electrons for the second one. So simultaneous equation. Hmm. What do we need to do to make sure the electrons are the same? It tells me I'm going to multiply the second one by three, right? And the first one by one. Multiply all two by three for the second one. So the electron becomes six, while the other one remains the same. The first equation remains the same. Are we good? So let's see about that. 
and voila we're multiplying the first one by three to make sure that they are all the same they are all the same we're multiplying all two by three make sure they're all the same and so it becomes this Note that 3 multiplies everything. It multiplies this, it multiplies this, it multiplies this, it multiplies this, and it multiplies this. So it becomes this. Now, sorry I didn't mention it earlier. If you need to have a book by your side so you can write this down by yourself, you follow the steps, you can go back back in into the video and back in the video and try to write down the steps and follow us up, follow it up. To better help you to to help you understand better and so this remains the same because we're multiplying by one so there's no need to show that so step seven which i consider the last step add the reactions and cancel out common terms and here we go so we're adding these plus look at our plus sign over here you don't need to write the plus sign you're just writing it next to just writing next to together is sufficient so we have this and our final equation is worth now I, I left out a step not really a step but an explanation now the explanation I left out I started cancelling we are told that to add the reactions and cancel out common terms I cancelled out color common terms right from this point um, if, if you want you could just write the sum of some of everything before you cancel out now let's also explain that aspect that i cancelled out at the end of the day these two becomes the reactant side and this one's become the product side so let us see there is three water here and there's seven water here so i need to cancel out three out of this and here disappears so here lose left we're left with four and that's why you have four water over here do you understand okay well i don't know if you understand when i give you exercises and for the electron, we have six on the product side. Remember, you could just add everything like this reactant, reactant is equal to product, product, add up all the product, and that would solve it. So, electron is six here. On the other side, we have six electrons, so they cancel out. What else could we cancel out? Hydrogen ion. We have hydrogen ion on the reactant, on the product side over here. Do we have hydrogen ion? Yes, we have hydrogen ion. 14 hydrogen ion. It means that I will need to remove 9 from that, leaving us with 5 hydrogen ion. And voila, we have 5 hydrogen ion. So that's what it means to cancel out common terms. So if you have any excess of common terms, when I mean common terms, terms you in introduce such as water, hydrogen ion, and electron. Of course, electron must go. And every other one must go to have a balanced equation. That is the final step. So I think that's all we could take. And every other balance of vector reaction in regards to the secondary school level follows the same procedure. Now we've looked at all the steps. We've we've applied all steps. You'll be have I'll be giving you exercise to try out. So to better help me know if you've understood everything I have taught so far. Now pause the video at any point if you don't understand any aspect and ask questions when necessary in the Google Classroom. So for your consumption, we have these equations you could choose anyone you don't have to submit it you just practice on your own i'll be giving you an assignment in the google classroom so you don't have to worry about this one i may pick one of them i may pick all of them to give it in the google classroom so just work any of these you can pick one out and practice for yourself to see how well you've done so far so uh, you, ex you expect your assignment in the google classroom and your classwork in the google classroom I think that's all we can take for today. I do hope that it was a wonderful time for me. I enjoyed every aspect of it. So thank you for watching. Stay safe and observe social distancing.